This is episode 17 of the One Idea Podcast. Invest in yourself through reskilling and upskilling. This podcast is produced by Evolve and Adapt, a certified management consulting and digital implementation firm based in Singapore and Malaysia. If you're looking for a professional team to position your brand and grow your business to the next level, speak to us at evolveadapt.com. Dear citizens, my name is JC Sum. I'm a certified marketing management consultant and the author of Evolve, Adapt or Collapse. In this podcast, a recurring theme is value, and not just value, but differentiated value. While most of this podcast content revolves around business owners and managers, in this episode, we are going to focus on employees or salaried workers. As an employee, the value you bring to the organization is the ability to perform tasks in your role well and help the organization be profitable. Differentiated value is the additional value that an employee can bring to the table which benefits an organization, regardless of whether that benefit is directly related to their role. The benefit can also be tangible or intangible. If there are two employees in an organization who are up for a promotion or raise, if all things being equal, the employee who offers more differentiated value will likely be rewarded. One way to increase differentiated value is to invest in yourself through learning and training. You're never too young or old or experienced to invest in your learning. In fact, in today's market, you honestly have no choice. And the simple reason is the world is changing too fast. Even if you develop your skills and grow your experience, they may become outdated or obsolete as new technology is invented and new methods are formulated. While there are basic evergreen skills that are foundational and fundamental, the application of the skills in the current market are what will keep you relevant and valuable. I recently heard a seasoned traditional marketing manager remark that digital marketing and marketing are essentially the same thing. It is just that it is in the online space. So there's no need to learn digital marketing unless you're doing technical implementation. I knew from the statement that this individual has a very shallow knowledge of digital marketing. While the fundamental principles of marketing remain the same, the application of the principles are completely different. It is not just the technical application, but even how digital marketing is strategized, measured and optimized. Customer behavior in the digital world is very different from the online world where traditional marketing exists. By intent, actions and expectations have changed due to the advent of digital and mobile technology. Digital marketers' ability to reach and target customers through inbound and outbound marketing is also unprecedented in marketing. So for a marketer to say that traditional and digital marketing is essentially the same means this person is in danger of being obsolete or prone for replacement in the digital evolving world. This example applies to any field and any industry. Just think of the colleagues that you work with. Are there seasoned workers who have 15 to 20 years of experience and are technically in the prime of their careers, but have trouble keeping up with new products, equipment, digitalization, or new technology? How can you invest in yourself to increase your differentiated value to your employer? The key is upskilling and reskilling. Upskilling and reskilling prepares you for economic changes. In a keynote address at the Straits Time Education Forum in 2022, Education Minister Chan Chung Singh mentioned that the pace of acquiring skills and knowledge must intensify as Singaporeans face the reality of having to change jobs every five years. He also added that about 20 to 25 percent of Singapore's local workforce of about 3 million may need to upskill yearly and that is about half a million adult workers every year. Therefore, it is imperative that you continuously upskill to equip yourself with the right skills and knowledge to meet the fast-evolving industry demands and stay ahead of the changes that come our way. Upskilling and reskilling opens more career opportunities for you. According to Randstad Malaysia, 9 in 10 Malaysian employees surveyed want upskilling opportunities from their employers. 
drawing a relationship between relevancy in skills and career progressions, a good mix of respondents reported the following. 21% said they have been promoted and received a pay raise during the pandemic. 17% said they were promoted and will receive a pay raise later. And 14% have said they have been promoted but will not receive a pay raise. In Singapore, it is no different. Upskilling and reskilling set you apart from your competition, boost your employability and ensure that you are ready for the future of work. In this day and age where degree is commonplace, employers are looking above and beyond for potential employees with both theoretical and practical knowledge and skills, what I would consider differentiated value. Upskilling and reskilling provide opportunity to sharpen skills that you lack. When it comes to skills upgrading, workers tend to focus more on hard skills. However, soft skills are important too, as they affect how you work and interact with others. According to research by international recruitment firm Corn Ferry Focus, 92% of HR leaders view soft skills as crucial in a globalizing economy. While soft skills are harder to evaluate, define and measure, they can still be learnt and developed. Soft skills will define what kind of a professional you are and how others perceive you. If you're not sure how you can hone and develop your soft skills, reach out to a career coach. There are mind-body benefits of learning that upskilling and reskilling can provide. Professional development aside, learning new skills offers tremendous benefits to your mental health. When you're actively pursuing new knowledge and challenging yourself in different ways, you keep your mind engaged and sharp. A study by Oxford University found that when people pursue lifelong learning, their mental health is positively impacted. Seeking out intellectual challenges can help develop feelings of productivity and growth, which are great stress relievers. As an employee, should you consider upskilling or reskilling? First, it is important to understand the difference between upskilling and reskilling. Upskilling refers to the process where a worker learns advanced skills for his or current occupation. For example, a content writer takes up a course on search engine optimization to learn how content should be written for search engine algorithms like Google. There's no change in the vocation, but the content writer has added a new skill to his professional arsenal that makes him more relevant to today's market and provides differentiated value from other traditional content writers. On the other hand, reskilling refers to a process where a worker gains new skills for an entirely new occupation. For example, an accountant who takes up an adult education course and certification to become a corporate trainer and facilitator. To sum it up, reskilling is about versatility, while upskilling is about specialization. How can you upskill or reskill, and which one should you choose? There's no simple answer to the question as it depends on your industry, experience, and personal professional goals. What you must do is to objectively look at your role, your competition, field of expertise, and assess growth opportunities. Does upskilling by becoming more specialized in your field help with employability or career prospects? If you're in a competitive but high growth market such as software engineering, upskilling will likely be vital for career growth. However, if you work for a traditional print newspaper publisher, an advanced diploma in print technology may not be particularly useful in the mid to long term future. In this case, it would be better to reskill in another area but with relevance to your field. In the case of a print newspaper, taking courses in digital media and online publishing will likely be a better choice. Consider your field and keep abreast with industry information and projections. Is your job at risk of being replaced by technology such as artificial intelligence or machine learning in future? HubSpot identified 10 jobs that will likely be replaced in future. These include telemarketing, bookkeeping clerks, compensation and benefits managers, receptionists, couriers, proofreaders, computer support specialists, market research analysts, advertising salespeople, and retail salespeople. Personally, if possible, you should always do both. Upskill to be even more specialized and skilled in your domain and reskill in other areas to give you a diverse skill set. 
The key is to know how to tap on different, apparently unrelated skills and apply them to your current role. It might take creativity and imagination, but if you do, you create strong differentiated value for yourself as an employee. As a marketing consultant, my core competencies are in strategic marketing, research and planning, as well as technical skills in a wide variety of digital marketing such as content writing, SEO, paid advertising and data analytics. However, over my varied career, I've learnt or been trained in other skills such as event production, show production, lighting design, audio editing, video editing, graphic design, corporate training and speaking. All these skills have served me well and provided value to consulting clients directly and indirectly. Here are a few questions you could ask yourself to identify areas for upskilling or reskilling. What are you interested in? What skills can help you get ahead at work? What skills can help you improve your career in the long run? What skills are in demand? What skills do you need to switch careers? When it comes to upskilling or reskilling, there are different ways you can go about it. You could go the formal education route by getting diplomas, degrees or certifications from universities or professional bodies. These are generally more expensive, time-consuming and intensive. However, the resulting education and credibility you receive is high upon completion. If your goal is to increase your job prospects or career opportunities, this might be the best investment to make. From a pure skills and education point of view, you could learn a lot through free resources and opportunities. You could seek opportunities at work or volunteer to contribute on a side or ad hoc project. This might be the best way to reskill and upskill that has a direct impact on your organization and might also get you recognition. It will also allow you to see how you can contribute to the company and identify opportunities for yourself. Working with others will also help your soft skills in relationship building and receiving mentorship from seniors. If you are currently in between jobs or in a career transition, consider applying for internships regardless of your age. You could also consider freelancing and work from the bottom up in a new field to gain experience and exposure. Take online courses or learn from YouTube tutorials. Don't look down on YouTube tutorials because they may be free. There's a gold mine of information for almost every industry in the world. Finally, engage and interact with online communities in a specific field. You'll be amazed at how much you can learn from others by investing time and effort in being part of a niche community. There are several subsidies and programs for training and upskilling, such as Skills Future Credits. SkillsFuture Mid-Career Enhanced Subsidy, SkillsFuture Work-Study Programs, Workfare Training Support Scheme or WTS, and the Union Training Assistance Program, UTAP. You can take advantage of a relevant scheme to upskill or reskill yourself. Please check the show notes for details and links. The one idea of this episode is that upskilling and reskilling is critical to ensure you can continually offer differentiated value to your employer. Assess your own vocation, role in the organization and industry to determine whether you should upskill or reskill yourself first. You are never too old to learn, and the only danger is not learning and growing at all. As Aristotle remarked, education is the best provision for old age. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the One Idea Podcast. Catch every episode by subscribing to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or on your favorite podcast app. Just search for One Idea. O-N-E-E-Y-E-D-E-E-R. As you know, a podcast needs listeners' reviews to grow. So please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. This ensures we can keep this podcast free forever. Check the show notes for details. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our consulting firm, head over to oneideapodcast.com. My name is JC Sum and this has been One Idea.